Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. What's up, Buffalo Fanatics? Welcome back to this week's edition of the Buffalo Fanatics Podcast. I am your host, as always, Fern Bannatine, and on this week's show, we're going to spend the majority of our time previewing Friday evening's preseason Game 3, where the Bills travel to Ford Field to take on the Detroit Lions. I'll talk about where I'm going to focus my eyes and what I'm going to be watching closely, uh, as we always do. We'll also discuss the Detroit Lions, look at uh, their roster, their strategy, perhaps some players of theirs that we should keep, be keeping an eye on. I'm also going to use the first part of the podcast to uh, give you my review of preseason game two when we defeated the Carolina Panthers 27 to 14. And as we record this podcast, I'm going to give you a very raw, fresh perspective on this game. I've been disconnected for the last few days and I just watched the game and I haven't listened to any post game reviews or analysis. So I'm going to give you all of my own opinions and instant reactions from what I saw during this game. For the second week in a row, I was very impressed uh, with both the first-team offense and the first-team defense, and notably uh, with our second-year quarterback, Josh Allen. He ended up completing 9 of his 11 pass attempts for just over 100 yards in this game. Had some very pretty passes uh, that fade pass on that post pattern by Tommy Sweeney earlier in the game. Uh, Stands out. He hit Sweeney again a little later on on a really nice pass up the seam. He had quite a few uh, connections with wide receiver Cole Beasley on some underneath routes. And those two connecting is very encouraging and very exciting to see. To see that Allen can make those short and intermediate throws. And in particular, to have a, a route runner like Cole Beasley on the team is a significant upgrade to that part of our offense. That was probably one of the biggest weaknesses or gaps in our offense last year and not being able to connect on those uh, short to intermediate throws and setting us up in a lot of third and long situations because we weren't able to get that short passing game going or any kind of sustained early down rushing going. Uh, Like we always do, we have to caveat again that it is preseason and we don't want to have, I guess, the the Nathan Peterman effect where we we take too much stock into what we see in preseason and get our hopes up. But that being said, it is pretty exciting just to see Josh Allen being able to consistently hit those underneath routes. And you hope that when the season starts that this, this trend continues. And with the running backs in this game, I mentioned last podcast that I was uh, very excited to watch LaShawn McCoy to see if he can regain some of that old form before last year's disappointing season, playing in his first preseason game, getting his first action of the year. And I was not that all impressed with LaShawn McCoy in this game. A little worrisome. He, It was, again, a very small sample size, but he uh, probably looked more like the player we saw last year uh, rather than the dynamic LaShawn McCoy from years before. In that small sample size, he didn't seem to have much juice in his cuts. And now, of course, he could be saving himself for the regular season as well. He may not be playing at full speed. But I would say I was a little disheartened by what I saw from LaShawn McCoy. And I think the running back situation will really stand to bear watching over the next few weeks. Uh, Just give him McCoy's salary and then with Devin Singletary's uh, emergence, at least in these first two preseason games. Singletary, for the record, didn't do anything too special in this game either. Uh, but he is on a rookie salary, whereas McCoy, of course, is making that six over $6 million a year. So it does make some financial sense if we do decide to move on from LaShawn McCoy. Sometimes opinions like this tend to be unpopular because we uh, go in attachment to certain players, especially players who have done so well for us as LaShawn McCoy has in his brief time here. Uh, but ultimately, we have to think about what's best for the team and I'm sure it's not an easy decision for the front office either. Uh, LaShawn McCoy has been one of our veteran leaders the last few years so that bears consideration as well but I'm very curious as to what happens over the next little while to see if McCoy does keep his spot on this team of course all this commentary is based on four carries during the game Uh, he also did score a touchdown on a short yardage play which is always encouraging and it might be a tough decision upcoming for this front office as as to how they deal with LaShawn McCoy Now on the wide receiver slash tight end front in this game, I already mentioned how impressed I was with Cole Beasley. Uh, Tommy Sweeney as well made a few nice catches that I mentioned. Uh, The other guy that got a lot of playing time in this game was big Duke Williams. 
the former Edmonton Eskimo wide receiver that we talked about a lot previously, how he was a guy that I was kind of rooting for because he offers some a different dynamic than most of our other receivers on the roster. Uh, we haven't really seen much of him uh, through throughout training camp in that first preseason game. Uh, he hasn't been getting many special team snaps. Uh, but I think this game, they did put him in a little bit longer to get a longer look at Duke Williams. And maybe he is emerging uh, a bit later than expected in camp and maybe pushing for that. Uh, I think we all assume that last rece- wide receiver spot, that six wide receiver spot, seems to be that five are set in stone. And it's uh, down to uh, Isaiah McKenzie, Ray Ray McLeod, and uh, potentially Duke Williams to fill that last roster spot. And with Williams, I think he's probably still the underdog and he's probably more of an ideal practice squad candidate. But he definitely did impress in this game, uh, catching that touchdown from Matt Barkley. I did get a text this morning telling me that Brian Debo was showing him some love and talked about how Williams is a very unique player that they have on the roster just given his size and contested catch ability. Uh, However, I, I still do think that he may have problems separating in the NFL he doesn't look like he do, he looks a little heavy footed out there but there's a lot of wide receivers in this league that made it that didn't have ideal speed or separation ability so ultimately I think Duke Williams is the another player that we're going to have to watch down the stretch here in this preseason to see if he continues to make a push for uh, that probably that last wide receiver roster spot uh, there's still always a chance that they do keep seven receivers uh, but more likely than not he's battling for one roster spot with a few other players who are just a little bit ahead of him right now. And I think the ultimately the special teams, not playing special teams uh, very much, if at all, is going to hurt Williams as well. Now, as I mentioned on last week's podcast, I said I was going to watch the offensive line closely in this game. And I thought the starters played uh, fairly well, in particular uh, with pass blocking. I thought Spencer Long had a pretty good game. I was watching him closely because I thought at first that Cody Ford was supposed to be the starter at right guard, and he was a player I was intent on keeping an eye on. Ford ended up playing right tackle in this game uh, due to Ty and Seki's knee injury, uh, but Long ended up having a few nice plays in this game. I thought he was our best interior offensive lineman. Uh, he showed off his mobility on one play that looked like it was going to be a pull. Uh, he ended up not having the best pass pro on that play, but he did demonstrate that he might be fully healthy again. There were concerns about his leg, and he shows that when he is healthy, he does have some pretty good movement skills. And I'm reminded that uh, Long did have success previously in this league as a starting guard with the Washington Redskins as a left guard a few years back. He's a very disciplined player, didn't take many penalties. Uh, then he did struggle last year when he was moved to center with the New York Jets, mostly due to uh, snapping issues because of a hand injury, though. Uh, but I think he can be a quality starter in this league. He's got to be a favorite for that right guard position or one of the guard positions. I know the Bills have been uh, consistently trotting out Quentin Spain at left guard, although I personally thought that Spain had a pretty shitty few series this game. He had an early run and an early pass play that blew up on him. Uh, He also took a holding penalty. It was a bit of a phantom call, so there's that. I'm not going to count him out just yet, though, because uh, clearly the Bills uh, brass see something in him to keep trotting him out at left guard. I've talked about how continuity and just consistency is key out there for this new look offensive line to start developing some chemistry together. So I don't necessarily have a big problem with this approach, but I still do wonder if perhaps Spencer Long and John Feliciano uh, would be better suited to be the starting guards on the opposite side of Mitch Morse at center. So maybe there are some position battles that still have to be fought here on the interior of the offensive line. Uh, We definitely have quite a few options. Uh, It'd be nice just to get everybody healthy though, so we can have kind of a level playing field, see what works best out there in the limited time we have left in the preseason. And then that tackle, Uh, unfortunately, the news isn't as positive. Uh, We have to talk about Cody Ford struggling again, uh, being put out at right tackle at the last minute due to Ty Nuseki's injury. Uh, Again, it did look like it was uh, a lot of technical flaws in Ford's game at this point. And I think it's something, I think the talent is there, definitely. He's a big, strong guy who moves extremely well for his size. But I think it might just take a little longer with Ford to reach his full potential. And at this point, uh, at least to me, it looks like it looks more and more like he's probably going to start the season as a reserve, maybe a reserve tackle guard swing player. I do question if uh, the Bills are taking the right approach with Ford and mixing and matching him at guard and tackle. Uh, they might be better served to just let him kind of f- focus on one position and hone his skills at that position. 
and I think the rest of the preseason it might be uh, beneficial for Cody Ford for him to keep him in longer in these games and let him learn the ropes against actual NFL linemen. I do hope that Ty Ninseki can get back on the field as soon as possible because it looks like he's probably going to be our best option at right tackle as well. Uh, now moving to the defense, I won't say too much about the defense except it was nice to see Daryl Johnson have another strip sack, a guy I've been watching closely. Uh, Ed Oliver had a pretty nondescript game. He did swat a ball down, which was nice to see. Uh, I thought Harrison Phillips had a good game. He had some really good reps. Even Jordan Phillips as well. They both uh, penetrated quite a, quite a few plays, I think, in that second quarter. And I think uh, they're both making stating their case uh, to be on this roster. And it looks more, more likely than not that they're going to be the two backups behind uh, Star Latulale and Ed Oliver. Now on the special team side of things, uh, here's where we should be probably most concerned. Uh, Steven Hoshka. Man, this is getting concerning at this point. Uh, we really need him to be the kicker that he was for us two years ago when he carried us. Uh, won a few games down the stretch in late in games for us with big game-winning kicks. But the truth of the matter is with Hoshka is uh, he hasn't been the same kicker since he suffered that ankle injury uh, in late in the 2018 season. He struggled ever since, and it really is a cause for concern. It doesn't help that our punting game is still a less than ideal situation going into the season. So with special teams, oof. I am a firm believer that a special teams is one of the more underrated components in a game. It makes such a big difference in field position and making those kicks. So it's, it's going to bear some watching uh, going down the stretch in this preseason to see if Hoshka continues to struggle and whether we may have to start considering alternative means going into the season. Uh, so all things considered, a pretty optimistic win for the Buffalo Bills in their second preseason game. Uh, with Josh Allen looking pretty good, comfortable in the pocket. Matt Barkley looked good as well. He seems firmly entrenched as a backup quarterback. Uh, the defense continued to play well, and I think they're still on track to be uh, maybe potentially a top five defense in the league this year. And in summary, after two preseason games, I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm pleasantly surprised uh, from what I see from the team overall, and in particular the first team offense and the first team defense. Okay, so now moving on to preseason week three when we take on the Detroit Lions at Ford Field this upcoming Friday. Well, what should we be looking for? I think by this point of the season, the most important thing is we are looking to avoid injuries or any more injuries. Uh, we're getting to the point, I think, with uh, some players on injury reserve and Mitch Morris's concussion issues that we can't really stand to lose any more players. And I'm always on the edge of my seat in these preseason games, especially when starters are playing uh, early in the first few series just don't want to see another player go down. I don't expect the starters to play much, if at all, uh, during this game. So I think it's really going to be a chance for some of those back-of-the-roster guys fighting for some last roster spots to state their claim. Uh, you'll see, probably see a lot of camp bodies get a lot of playing time as well. Uh, most people don't really care for preseason games 3 and 4. It really is a bit of an exercise in futility at this point. We're just trying to get through to the regular season healthy. But I do like to see some of those underdog players that are fighting for roster spots come out and stake their claim. I'm a big draft guy, of course, and I like watching young players develop. So I don't mind watching these late preseason games as much as most people. But we are definitely getting to the point in the season where we just kind of want the season to start. It's time to start thinking about our fantasy football teams. It's time to start thinking about the final roster projections. And that's probably the area where I'm going to watch, be watching most closely in this game. Some of those still outstanding position battles. I think we talked a little bit about it. That last receiver spot, it's still up in the air. Probably between Isaiah McKenzie, Robert Foster. Sorry, not Robert Foster. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod and Duke Williams. McKenzie had another nice play in the second preseason game. He's still my favorite to win that last wide receiver spot. Just because he's a little more dynamic than the others. Outside of that roster battle, I think the offensive line uh, still stands to bear a little bit of watching to see how it all shapes out. I do want to see the run run blocking improve a little because I think two straight, straight preseason games now outside of that Christian Wade play didn't seem like there was as much room as you would hope for these running backs to make plays. I guess that is a good segue to talk about the running backs. We already talked about how LaShawn McCoy, even in that small sample size, wasn't as dynamic as we would hope. Frank Gore, he's probably good to go. He's probably going to be shelved for most of the rest of the preseason. He may get minimal carries, but he's going to be firmly entrenched on this roster and will get significant carries. 
I thought TJ Yeldon had a nice little bounce back after that first preseason game when he fumbled. He had a pretty solid second preseason game, and now senior Reese Perry fumbled in this game. That's another position battle to watch. I think just given senior Reese Perry's uh, special teams experience, he probably still has the edge. Uh, but TJ Yeldon's been going to be a pretty solid running back, a pretty solid player that the Bills end up cutting if we do end up cutting him. Uh, just goes to show you how deep this team is. We talked about how much more deep this team is compared to previous years, and that's a perfect example of that. And of course, that brings us to Christian Wade, who is probably uh, the young developmental player that I, I want to watch most in these these last two preseason games. Following that crazy exciting first carry in the first preseason game, uh, Wade had another nice play in the second preseason game, a catch and run of 48 yards. He showed off his great speed and athleticism and that dynamic acceleration in the open field. Like I mentioned, I haven't really been paying attention to the media following this second preseason game, but I can imagine that there's some Christian Wade hype building and potentially calls for the Bills to keep him on their 53-man roster. Uh, Despite the big plays from Wade, I still think that he's more likely than not uh, still a practice squad candidate at this point. Now, it bears mentioning that the Bills do have a few additional options with Wade uh, than they do with other players. Uh, because he's in the International Pathway Program, uh, it allows an exemption from the practice squad so they can actually keep him as an 11th member of the practice squad. In that situation, they would be able to protect him from any other team claiming him during the season. However, the Bills would not be able to call him up to the active roster and also if he doesn't make the original 53-man roster, he still does have to clear waivers. So. There's a ch- outside chance that the Bills would lose him at that stage of the process as well. It's worth noting that for in- the international player program, there is an exemption from the practice squad, which would allow the Bills an additional player on their practice squad. So they'd be able to keep the regular 10 practice squad players uh, in addition to Wade. And I think ultimately he just has quite a bit of learn, a lot to learn uh, in terms of just X's and O's, even how to take a carry from the quarterback. Uh, definitely the talent is there, but it's probably going to take a year for him to kind of grasp the fundamentals. So I think the practice squad is still uh, his most likely destination this year. Now, moving on to the Detroit Lions, uh, taking a look at this team. I thought this was a team that really underachieved last year. They regressed from previous years. Uh, they finished 6-10 and on the season. I think expectations were a little higher. Uh, Matthew Stafford was a guy that I thought was potentially at the point in his career where he was going to take a step towards the elite category. Uh, Instead, he regressed a little bit last year. And I think ultimately, uh, new head coach Matt Patricia uh, bears some of the accountability for the struggles. It was his first year as a head coach, and perhaps uh, he wasn't able to get the players to buy into uh, whatever he was he was preaching. I know he was holding extremely intense practices early on uh, in the preseason last year. Uh, during the season, he received some scrutiny for having his team practice in the snow, when I believe at the time their next four games were indoors. Uh, but for, for whatever the reason, his message wasn't resonating with the team last year. Uh, he's going into his second year as a head coach, and we'll see if he is able to improve as a head coach and is able to get some players or more players to buy into him. Uh, this offseason, they went out and made some really nice moves. I think they've really fortified the defensive line. Actually, it started uh, midway through last season when they acquired defensive tackle Damon Harrison. Uh, they since brought in expatriate Trey Flowers at the defensive end position. They recently signed another defensive tackle in Mike Daniels, who's a pretty good penetrator from the inside. So the defensive line is definitely pretty stout. I think if there's something to look forward to in this preseason game is to see how the Bills' new-look offensive line handles itself against a a fairly formidable front four. That is, if these starters do play for the Lions in this game. Now, taking a look at their linebackers, I don't think it's their strongest position group. Uh, They have a third-year player, Jared Davis, who was a first-round draft selection a few years back. He hasn't really put it all together yet, Uh, misses a lot of tackles. I think they're going to play him more on the weak side this year, so we'll see how that transition works out. I thought they reached when they're, with their second round draft pick in selecting another linebacker, uh, Hawaii's Jelani Tavai. Now, the reasoning behind the selection is his versatility. Uh, this defense, similar to the Patriots defense, puts a strong emphasis on finding versatile, uh, multi-schematic players. They think he can rush the passer and drop into coverage. The Lions probably envision him in some sort of a Dante Hightower-like role, the uh, former middle linebacker from the New England Patriots that Patricia coached the last few years. 
I personally thought he was more of a mid to late round draft pick, uh, just given his the lack of range, but we'll see how that works out. And then their secondary is pretty solid with uh, Darius Slay locking down uh, one cornerback position. They have Quandre Driggs and young player Tracy Walker at safety, who they're pretty excited about. Of course, Matt Patricia is a defensive-minded coach, so it'll be interesting to see if their defense can develop in the second year. I think versatility will be the name of the game with this defense. We're probably going to see plenty of different 4-3 and some 3-4 looks. They'll probably have lots of different sub packages. In New England, Patricia was all about optimizing the best matchups, so I think that'll continue here. Albeit we probably won't see too many exotic looks in this third preseason game as the Lions probably would not want to give away too many of their disguises just yet. And then moving to the offensive side of the ball. I thought this is where they really regressed last year as a team. Of course we mentioned that quarterback Matthew Stafford regressed a little bit. Their offense as a whole finished 24th in the NFL last year, 25th in scoring. Uh, that being said, they do have some nice young players on offense. They have a wide receiver, Kenny Galladay, who, uh, when the Bills and Lions played last December, had a big game against Tredavious White. It'll be interesting to see if those two match up early in this game as well, and to see if the Lions challenge White again and see if he can gain some retribution. Uh, then at the running back position, the Lions have a nice young second-year running back in on Johnson. He was having an excellent rookie season, averaging 5.4 yards per carry before going down with a knee injury. Now, if you want some fantasy advice, I would say that Johnson is a guy you should be jumping all over. Uh, that is because the Detroit Lions are bringing in a new offensive coordinator. It's former Seahawks offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel. And if there's one trademark to his offense is that he likes to run the ball. Last year as the offensive coordinator for the Seahawks, they ran the ball 52% of the time. That was the most in the league. Of course, it always helps when you have a rushing quarterback like Russell Wilson. Uh, but Bevel is really going to try to set the tone with a really strong running game. And Johnson should see a lot of those carries. Uh, another part of Bevel's game planning should be using the use of the tight end position. If most of you probably recall, the Lions drafted one spot in front of us in the 2019 draft. And they picked up Iowa tight end TJ Hawkinson. Many of us were very excited to hear that his name called it because it meant that Ed Oliver would have slipped to us. At number nine overall, uh, it seems like Hawkinson's been pretty impressive in training camp so far, and he's another guy, maybe a deep sleeper that you might want to keep your eye on in fantasy. And I'm hoping that he does get some reps in this game because I do want to see him in action against NFL competition. And so far, the rest of their rookie class goes. They selected cornerback Amani Aruwarie. Gosh, I hope I pronounced that right. That's a difficult one. Uh, they selected him in the fifth round, and he's had a really nice training camp, uh, getting some first-team reps. He didn't have the best game in their preseason. Their second preseason game got called for a penalty, uh, but I'm sure he's going to get a lot of action in this game as the Detroit Lions continue to evaluate what they have in him. Outside of those players, it's a pretty nondescript roster. It's not much more to look forward to really in this game, uh, more just the nature of the, it being the third preseason game where we're kind of getting ready for actual real football and we don't expect a lot of starters to play. I think ultimately, like I said earlier, uh, I think we just want to get out of this game without uh, sustaining any more real injuries. And hopefully some of these guys can start getting healthy again. In particular, I'm hoping to hear some good news on the Mitch Morse front in the near future. He's going to be a key part of our offense this season and, we, and the concussion issues are very concerning. I think to some extent you kind of have to take a step back and um, make sure that Mitch Morse makes the right decision for himself and his family as well. Even though we hope that he does come back and plays an integral role with this team. And I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but if he does make any other decisions, I think we could respect that given the seriousness of the concussion issues he's having and what we've seen from former players. Uh, but that'll, that'll be another story that bears watching over the next little while. So on that note, I think we'll wrap up this week's show. Looking forward to another preseason game this Friday versus the Detroit Lions. Ultimately, it means that we're only uh, just over two weeks away from the actual kickoff of the regular season. Hope you all enjoy the week and the game. And until next week, go Buffalo Bills!